Hello, and welcome to day four of our English language arts eighth grade video lesson. I'm Miss Garen. I've been with you for this week in our learning. We're going to have a little bit of a shorter lesson today because tomorrow on our last day, we're going to be doing a reading and a writing activity. So today's lesson will be just a little bit shorter. Go ahead and get out some paper and something to write with as I present my screen. Okay, so as you know, we have been learning this week about theme and determining meaning of words with a focus on connotation and denotation. Instead of a picture today, we will do a picture tomorrow, but today we've got another riddle. So go ahead and read this riddle to yourself as I read it to you. Read it with you. You're driving a city bus. At the first stop, three women get on. At the second stop, one woman gets off and a man gets on. At the third stop, two children get on. The bus is blue and it's raining outside in December. What color is the bus driver's hair? So go ahead and take a minute and see if you can figure this riddle out. So there are some sentences, sentences in here that have been put in as a distraction. Because if you look at the first sentence and the last sentence, none of the sentences in the middle mean anything. Because it says at the beginning that you are driving the city bus. And at the end, it says, what color is the bus driver's hair? Which means that the bus driver's hair is the color of your hair. So for me, it would be like a light brown. So what color is your hair? That would be the color of the bus driver's hair. So that was just a quick riddle. Let's review our objectives for the week. Again, we've been focusing on connotation to determine the meaning of words and to differ differentiate or to determine a difference among multiple meaning of words and phrases. And over the last day or so, we've been really focusing on theme and how an author develops theme. Our target, our learning target for today will be that you'll be able to explain how an author develops a theme in a written text by working on an independent activity. So I have two review sentences here about connotation. I want you to look at number one and see if you can read it to your see um, read it to yourself and see if you can figure out the answer. Okay, so it says everyone in the office respects Casey because of her kind but blank attitude. This is someone that people like. So if people like her, we would need a word that has a positive connotation or meaning here. So which one of these options? A, assertive, B, bossy, or C, demanding? Which one of these words would be the best answer for here? So the correct answer is A for assertive, because if you're bossy, that means you like to boss people around, and that has a negative connotation to it. And demanding can also have a negative connotation because 
it, it it's when you demand a lot of, of people. So if you're respected, you want more of a positive word. And if you're assertive, it means that you are determined and you ask for a lot. It is a different, another word for demanding, but it has a less negative meaning to it. So the best answer is A. Now look at the second question. Read it to yourself and see what the best answer is. All right, so again, it says in the hint that's in bold that they're looking for a positive word here. And Curtis is wanting to buy a car. And it says that he's, it says, well, said Curtis with an embarrassed smile, I'm looking for a blank car. So we want a more positive connotation. So A, a is a cut rate, it's kind of a neutral, and it, it's not really a word, it's not really a phrase that we would use that much. B is cheaper, and cheaper is doesn't have as the most positive meaning to it. And then C is more economical. And when you say something that's more economical, it's just a nicer way of saying cheaper. So the, the appropriate answer or the right answer for this one would be C, a more economical car. All right, so there's our review for connotation and denotation. Let's go on and go back to our practice in our activity that we've been using um, since either yesterday or the day before on theme. And we're already in, we, we, we had our, our photograph and we talked about theme and how a character's details, setting and action, those details can help you determine a theme. And we reviewed that on Tuesday. Then we started with a short story about Holden and Pops, and we continued that on Wednesday. And then yesterday, we finished up with Holden and Pops, and we moved on to a word of advice. And this was a story, a really short story um, about Kareem and Angie. And remember, Angie was in charge of a career fair and she was running out of time. And she likes to do everything her way or by herself until she finally realized that she can't do it all. And she had to ask Kareem to step in and help her. And when Kareem stepped in and helped her, this is where Angie's attitude shifted. And it shifted from how she was at the beginning of the story to the end of the story. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to look at these questions that they asked us that we did not get to yesterday. And there are some hints on the side. So I want you to um, go ahead and pause the video and answer these questions by yourself. And if you remember, if you need um, a copy of the link, you can go to the at home eighth grade um, link and you will see a copy of this activity is available for you to go back and reread it if you need it. Because there's always, it's always a good idea to reread. So the story is here, one word of advice, and the questions that I want you to do are questions one, two, and three. So just those three questions. So go ahead and pause the video and take as much time as you need to answer these questions. Okay, so you've paused the video and you've reread the passage if you needed in order to answer these questions. And it says that the directions to use the hints on this page to help you answer the questions. So we've got these hint 
hints over here. So let's look at question number one, and then we can look at the hint. So the question says, at the beginning of the story, what is Angie's attitude? Okay, so then we would go back to the beginning of the story, and we would read paragraph one right here, and we would reread this in order to answer the question. So this is what you would reread if you need in order to um, answer the question in case that you did not know the answer right away. All right, so let's go back and look at our options. What was her, what is her attitude at the beginning of the story? She's frustrated by the lack of help she gets from her friends. I don't remember any mention of there being a lack of help from friends. So I do not think that that answer is good. And so I would cross that answer out. B, she trusts only Kareem for reliable help and advice. That might not be a bad answer, but we need to see and look for further if there is a better answer. She thinks she's the only one competent to organize the event. Well, that is definitely a feeling that we get from the beginning of our story because she talks about how it's her brainchild and her Look here, her brainchild and her responsibility, and that had she'd spent hours working on it, then making sure the school, and then with three days to go, she says, I'm multitasking like crazy, and I still can't imagine how I'll get everything done. All right, so this is where you can see that she doesn't like, she doesn't want to give anybody else the opportunity to help her. She wants to do it by herself. I really like the answer C, definitely better than B. Let's look at D. She's glad to be part of a team working on a project. Well, is she working on a team? No, she's not. She's only working by herself. So the best answer is C. Good job. All right, let's look at number two. Which of the following sentences, oh, we didn't even look at the hint. <laughs> well, it, you know what we did because we went back and looked at the sentences. Oops, don't let me forget. All right, let's look at number two. Which of the following sentences best describes an important theme about responsibility as described in one word of advice? All right, so we are looking for one of these sentences to best describe an important theme about responsibility. Because that is one of our themes. One of our themes of the story is responsibility. So we want to pick the sentence that is the best one. Now it says over here in our hints, which sentence describes Angie's attitude at the end of the story? That's a good hint because we do not want to take how Angie felt at the beginning to get our the best sentence that describes theme and responsibility. We want to get it from the end when she changes her mind. All right, so let's look at our options. A, a strong leader bravely faces all challenges. Maybe. B, good leaders trust others to do good work. Hmm, that's a good answer. I like that one a lot better than I like A. But let's keep going. C, seeking help is the last resort of a, of a real leader. You know, I don't think that that is a theme. And actually, I don't even think that that's best practice. When you find real leaders, you will find that leaders always utilize the help of others in order to reach their goals. So I'm not liking C that much either. Let's look at D. People would rather give advice than lend a hand. That one is off topic. We don't really even have kind of that. That is not a central message. So A and D. Are, are out definitely because a is not even really mentioned in that that's not a role with responsibility for this story it doesn't match b um is excellent and c we said it's just not best practice so the best answer would be b good leaders trust others to do good work all right last one select two pieces of evidence. So there's two things here that are correct. So we're gonna check two boxes. Select two pieces of evidence from word of advice that support the correct answer to question two. Check the boxes of your two choices. Now I love this question because when you are looking to support your answer with evidence, 
or with facts from a story, you want a quote because that quote comes from the story to help support your correct answer. So this is exactly what you would do when you are writing and you are trying to, if you're writing and, you know, trying to persuade, trying to um, someone to see your point of view, you would want to pull a quote or a textual evidence quote from the passage or from what you're reading to support your answer. All right, so it says over here on the hints, which details best support the important theme of the story? Okay, so we are looking for two details here and which two help best support the theme of the story? All right, so we've got the first one. Well, go ahead and read them to yourself. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video, but I'm gonna keep going. So we've gotta find two pieces of evidence from the story that best support our theme. And we really need to focus on this activity because this is something that we are going to do tomorrow when, when you are going to write a paragraph for me. So we're looking for our, our quotes. Let's read them through. First one, which was her brainchild and her responsibility. Does that, is that a good support of the theme of responsibility? Because remember that we're get, finding two quotes that support the correct answer to question two. So her brainchild and responsibility, okay, it has the word responsibility in it, but that doesn't mean anything. Does it talk about the overall theme of responsibility? No. So the first box is out, you can cross it out. I've been multitasking like crazy. Now that shows maybe that you're responsible, but that's not showing the theme when it relates to responsibility for this story. So I'm not liking the second option that much either. Three, the only person who could get everything right. Now, that would be the theme at the from the beginning of the story. This is definitely not the theme from the end of the story because at the end of the story, Angie realizes that she cannot come she cannot do this alone and she needs Kareem to help her. So we know that that one is out as well. Let's look at question number, but let's look at the fourth box. I could never have come up with that myself. Hmm. Now that's not a bad answer because that's when Angie realizes that her ideas are not necessarily always the best ideas, that it somebody else might even have a better idea on how to do something than she did. So that's a pretty good quote to sum up the theme of responsibility and that not just taking responsibility for yourself, but delegating, remember delegating, um, giving other people responsibility. I really like the fourth sentence. Let's look at number five how to eval evaluate the server's capability or the sound, sim sound, sim sim or the sound system's amplitude. That doesn't have anything to do with um, our theme or what we're talking about here. You can definitely cross that one out. Now look at the last one. The best thing I ever did was hand that clipboard to you. All right, students. If there was one sen sentence to sum up the entire message of this whole story, it would be that beautiful sentence at the end that the best thing I ever did was hand that clipboard to you because that's what a real leader does. They realize I can't do this by myself. I need your help. And not only do I need your help, but you might even have it better than I do. And if we all do this together, we can get more done and then the work will be better. I have an excellent example to show you or just to talk really quickly with you about this whole learning at home um, less teacher lesson video idea, which was Mr. Cameras's. At first, it seemed like a large task, but then through many, many people working on it and delegating, you do this, you do that, 
And so I was one of the team members that was delegated to create lessons for middle schoolers. This was a new challenge for me. I have only taught elementary school and high school. And at first I, I thought, I don't know about this. But with my teammates and with support and with help, it was a great, great end result. And that's where that responsibility, handing it out and then getting help when you need it, because that's another theme that goes hand in hand with the theme of responsibility, that when you can't do something by yourself, you need to get help. And that was something that Angie, she didn't really ask for it. Kareem is the one that asked, you know, he offered his help. But this is another theme that you can't do it by yourself. You can't always do this by yourself. You need help. And so that's the best theme that sums up the story that I just gave you about the learning at home videos. Okay. So there is one more activity here called the canoe breaker. If you would like to um, practice and do this um, activity on your own, you are more than welcome to. And if you would like the answers to the questions, just, to, you know, if you do it, you are more than welcome to email me and I can give you those correct answers if needed. And I will share my email with you tomorrow. But this is just another extra activity that if you want some more practice that you can practice. But we're going to practice um, some more tomorrow in another way. And so please do not worry that we will not be um that we will not be returning to our I, lesson of theme so let's review really quick we covered how an author uses theme in a story and we were we covered also again connotation which we've been doing now tomorrow we've got something different we're going to be using one of your anchor texts and some of you might have read uh have already started to read brown girl dreaming um, while you were in the classroom with your teacher. And if you didn't, we have digital copies available. Um, so feel free to reach out. And if you need a digital copy, please let me know. I will be providing the text tomorrow for reading purposes through, um, through my lesson. So you won't need it for tomorrow. But if you'd like to further read, I strongly encourage you to do so. Jacqueline Woodson, the author of Brown Girl Dreaming, I met her several years ago and I have a um, signed copy of her book, Brown Girl Dreaming. Unfortunately, it's in my office at City Hall, which I can't get to. And so I would love to have showed it to you, but it's one of my favorite um, stories. It's a memoir. So we're gonna talk about what a memoir is tomorrow, but it is my favorite and that's what we'll be doing. We'll be doing a theme reading and writing activity with Brown Girl Dreaming. And so, and we will be reviewing, especially look at this bottom part that we will be reviewing. We will explain and reflect through the character setting, um, through the characters setting and plot, how the theme is developed. So that is going to be our main focus at the bottom. You'll read a short story, you'll identify a theme. You're not gonna read a short story, I'm, I need to change. You're gonna read a short part from an overall story. Um, and then we're going, but we're going to use the character setting and plot to determine the theme. And then we're gonna talk about how and why um, Miss Woodson chose that theme. So we're gonna bring it even further and I'm gonna ask you to write a paragraph or two. But that's it for today. Um, we will go back to, our, we will go back over to here and I just want to say goodbye for the day. Enjoy the, the sun is starting to peak. And so maybe you will be able to get outside. Of course, I'm just realizing that while I'm videoing that your the weather on the day that you watch this might be better. I forgot. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.